Well, we all know Pep Guardiola loved him some Mikel Arteta, but Arteta had to answer the call to lead his former side, Arsenal, leaving Pep without his proper right-hand man. Alex Kirkland is joining us now because apparently, Alex, that search could be over for Pep and he might have a proper number two at Manchester City by the name of Juan Malillo. So tell us a little bit more about him because I know I've seen some comments where he, Juanma has even described Pep as basically his other son. Yeah, it's a very, very interesting one. I don't think it's an exaggeration to say that Juan Malillo might be the most influential coach that most people have never heard of. Now, you look at his CV, you look at the list of clubs that he's, that he's managed, it's a long list, and a lot of them aren't necessarily the, the biggest names. And you also notice that a lot of those, those jobs have been quite brief. He hasn't always lasted very long in a lot of places that he's been. I think I'm right in saying that in his first five jobs in Spain at the top level, he got sacked in all five of them. So now you look at his CV and you might be thinking this is a bit of a strange appointment, but this is a guy whose who's reputation as a coach, as a thinker, as a bit of a philosopher is much, much bigger than what you can see in terms of kind of concrete success that he's had on the, on the pitch. Like I say, he's had some really famous here in Spain defeats over the years. Probably the biggest one was when his Almeria team back in 2010, they were beaten 8-0 at home by Guardiola's Barca. So that, and he got sacked, I think, the same day. So he hasn't always had success on the pitch, but Pep has consistently pointed him out over the years as alongside um, the late, great Johan Cruyff, of course, as being the biggest influence in his career, as being the best coach that he ever had, because Pep Guardiola, towards the end of his playing days, went over to Mexico in 2006 to play for Juan Malillo for six months, just to basically watch and learn because I think Guardiola was already planning the next steps of his, of his coaching career then. And literally, Guardiola would sit in training with a notebook, making notes of what Leo was, was doing in training, because he knew that he hoped to, to emulate it one day. So these guys have a relationship that goes back a long way, and there's a huge amount of respect between them. And that's where this, this move comes from. And then what do you expect him to bring, I suppose, to the model that is at Manchester City now? Because we know it is a very well-oiled machine even though of course this season more often than not they've showed a bit more cracks in their armor than usual um there has even been talks about whether pep is getting a bit bored at manchester city and if he might be you know looking for a challenge elsewhere so you know what does juanma bring to it that probably could cement both their futures at city for a couple more seasons or years to come well maybe that that thing you just said about pep getting a little bit bored maybe that's key to this and him wanting to kind of shake things up and challenge himself as as well. I think what's interesting about this appointment is it's going totally in a different direction. It's a radical departure from someone like Arteta, who was just starting out as a coach and wanted to learn from Pep Guardiola. And now you've got Pep appointing a veteran mm -hmm. as his assistant, who's been around for literally for 30 years since the early 90s. And you think about some of the other names that have been mentioned in connection with this job, someone like Vincent Company, someone like Xavi Alonso, again, a totally different profile to, to Juan Marlillo. So Part of it might be about Pep wanting a different voice, um, someone who won't be afraid to speak up and challenge him because Juan Malillo is a guy who's very, very clear about what he thinks and, and where he stands. And he wouldn't be intimidated by, by Pep Guardiola. Well, well, I think pretty much all anyone else, any of us would be because Pep is such an intimidating figure. So I think that's, I think that's a big part of it as well. Like I say, this is a guy that Pep learned from in the, in the past. They share a lot of their ideas, a lot of their philosophy. When you think about, you know, if you want to know what kind of football to have Juan Marleo's teams played, it is Guardiola football. It is, to use that cliche, a bit of tiki-taka. It is the Spanish style that we've all become kind of accustomed to over the last decade or so. So they're very, very similar in terms of that footballing philosophy, partly because they've kind of learned it from, from each other. But yeah, I do think this is a guy who won't be afraid to kind of stand up to, to Pep and let him know exactly what he thinks. So all in all, match made in heaven, it just makes sense. I mean, look, like I say, when you look at Juan Malillo's career, a lot of times his jobs have gone quite badly wrong and quite fast. So I wouldn't want to, you know, <laughs> stick my neck out and say this is going you know, to work just, just yet. But this is different, of course. This yeah. isn't being a head coach. This is being a number two. This is working with, with Guardiola. And like I say, it's not a risk in the sense that these guys have known each other for 15 years. You know, they, they've worked together in the past, like I say, um, back in when, when Pep was a player for, for Leo in, in Mexico. 
they've coached against each other they've maintained this relationship they talk about each other basically as being as being family as leo being a role model being a mentor as you mentioned as pep being a, a son to, to him so that relationship is there and i think that's the biggest thing sometimes when when bringing a new face into a coaching staff, which is such a close-knit group, it's a, it's a risk, it's a gamble, isn't it? Yeah. And the way to minimize that is to bring in someone who, who you know pretty much inside out. And I think that's the case here. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.